Hey there, Titans, and welcome back to another Titan Academy video. Today, we're going to be talking about how to push data from your form to Salesforce. We're going to be talking about how to create a record in Salesforce, how to update a record in Salesforce. We'll talk about how to create a file in Salesforce and relate that file to your record. And we'll also talk about how to trigger your Salesforce action from a button. So in our last video, we set up this form and we made this nice structure for our form. We set up a little bit of conditional logic, some validations on our form, including mandatory fields, email validation, and a value rule as well. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how to actually take the data from this form and push it to Salesforce. So the first thing that we need to do is add a file uploader element to our form because part of what we're doing today is pushing that file to Salesforce. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the three dots over here just to remind you for a form element, if we want to add a row, we can click on either this plus button to add a row at the bottom of the form or these three dots and we're going to go ahead and do add row after. And I'm also going to merge this row so that now I can add my file uploader. And I can either write file upload in the search, or I can go to input, find my file, and put it in the row like that. Now, a couple of small things to mention about my file uploader. I can obviously change the style and, and change what it says here, like upload your um, ID, whatever it might be. I can determine how many files they're going to put here, and I'm going to limit them to one. I can compress their image if they're uploading an image here, and I can determine which file types um, they are uploading. All right. Uh, so I can say, for example, um, that I only want JPEG, uh, PDF, um, I don't know, PNG. Okay, so I can limit which file types they can add as well. Now, one thing I am going to do, we talked a little bit about value rules in the last video. I'm going to set a value rule here that does not allow them to upload a file. Um, I'm going to say max file size in megabytes. And we'll say here 30 megabytes. And the reason I'm saying 30 is because um, there's a limitation where we can't push more than 30 megabytes files to Salesforce in one push. So I'm going to say file to large. And I'll go ahead and click apply. All right, now that I've got my value rule, I make sure that my end user is not uploading a file that is too large to push to Salesforce. I'm ready to set up my push. So I'll show you the Salesforce cockpit here. If I go and click on the gear icon here on the left side and I click on Salesforce, that'll open my Salesforce cockpit. Um, we have specific videos showing how to run pushes and gets, but I will show you specifically how we will do it in our video today. We're going to go ahead and click on the push, and I'm going to click Create New. To create new, I will see Object in Salesforce. Now I can choose any object that I want to create in Salesforce here. Any object that I have access to as the integration user, I'll be able to see here on the list. All right. And I can really choose any object, whether that's a custom object, a standard object, part of a managed package. It doesn't matter. In my case, I'm going to create a contact. And we have a few actions here, create, update, or upsert, find, just to find a record without actually pushing any data to it, and delete. Today we're going to be focusing on create and update. And first we're just going to start with a basic create. And I'm going to give a description. Description is very important. Um, it helps us identify our pushes and gets. Um, so let's write here, uh, create, contact, in Salesforce. And I'm going to head over to mapping. And I, you'll notice that I have my Salesforce fields from contact on my left side. 
and my elements for my project on my right side. So I'm going to find the elements that I want to map. So for example, last name, I will map it to last name. And if you remember from a previous video, we're seeing here the metadata tag for our fields. We're not seeing the label because we gave it a metadata tag. So it makes it easier for us to find our fields. So I'm doing last name, first name. Um, let's do here email. And we'll put in the email field. I'll search here for phone. I think we'll just do mobile phone and we name that phone over here. And I believe we had birthday as well. So let's do DOB. Okay. And I believe that's all of our fields. Now, if we want to see what fields we have mapped, we can go to apply filter and we can say mapped fields. And you can see that I have one, two, three, four, five fields mapped. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and click apply here. And you'll see here that I've now created my contact. Okay. Now I'm also going to add a child push underneath my contact push because I want to create a file, but I want it to be associated with this specific contact that I'm creating. So I'm going to go ahead and again, click on these three dots and do add child. And again, I'm given the option to choose an object. I want to choose files. Now files in Salesforce is the same thing as saying content version, of course. So I can search for files or content version. And I'm going to say create file related to account to sorry, contact. And again, I'm just doing a simple create here. And you'll notice that if I go to mapped already, the first published location is mapped to my first push. Okay, my number one push for contact. The contact ID that's created in that push when I create this contact will be related now to the first published location of my content version. And what that means is that it will associate my file with this contact. Let's now map a couple of other important fields. So first of all, the most important is my version data. And that is the file itself. So I want to map that to my file uploader. Okay. And you can see it's called upload your ID it's spelled in incorrectly. And I'll fix that in a moment. And I want to choose file here. And now let's go ahead and do title. And let's give a name for our title. Now we can name our title, a field from our project. We can name it a static title like this, or we can do a mix of the two. And that's what we're going to do together today. We're going to say custom, and this allows us to create a custom title. We're going to click on the gear icon and we'll write, um, ID for and now we're going to add first name and we're going to add last name. So our final um, title for this document will be ID for and the first and last name of whoever fills out our form. But let's take a quick look at what we have mapped. So we have the title map with our custom mapping. We have our version data mapped, which is our file to our file uploader over here. And we have our first published location ID, which is how we associate the file. And it's being associated with the previous push that this is nested under the number one contact. And this will only work this way if you nest your push as a child. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. Um, but I'm referencing the push that happened immediately before this and the ID from that record that is created in our case. I'll go ahead and click apply. And now notice that you have the first push and the file push nested underneath this push. And that's what I mean by a nested push or a child. Okay. When I click on these three dots and I say add child, that will create the push to run underneath my initial push. And it will always run when this push after this push runs in sequence. Okay. Let's go ahead and close that. And we're ready to associate this now on our button. So we're going to go ahead and 
Um, we're going to take a shortcut here and click on the link. You can also get here by going to interactivity and configure on click action. And this is from our previous video that we set up that we're first validating our fields. And then we have a confirmation message and then a thank you message. Before our thank you message, after confirm, I'm going to add in the Salesforce action. So I'll click on this pink plus. I'll click on Salesforce action. And from my drop down here, I'll select my contact create push. Now we don't see our file push and that's because it's nested under our contact push. It will run along with and in sequence after our contact push. Now we can return this record ID to a variable. We're not gonna do that in our case. We don't have a need to do that, but we can return the created uh, contacts ID to a variable if we wanted to. And just a couple of options here. We can decide that we wanna run this in the background. We can, if we had multiple pushes and gets, we can run this in a custom order of execution for when to run which push or which get. Same thing with parallel load. We can do this so that they run simultaneously. And if we had a CAPTCHA um, to kind of to add some security to our push, we could have to do that as well. And we'll go over those in a separate video. Let's go ahead and click next. And I'm gonna give this a name, create contact and file. And we'll insert. And after finish, after this integration is finished, I wanna show my thank you message. Let's click apply. And let's actually name our rule on the button here because it's always good to name our rules. And we'll name this uh, create contact and file and check. And let's do apply. We'll save and let's run this. Let's say, okay, and okay, give it an email. We'll do some kind of phone number. All right, and I'll say I'm 18 years old so that I can enter my birthday as well. Okay. And let's upload our ID. I'll just choose this. And I'm ready to submit my form. Let's run it. Do you want to submit your form? Confirm. And it's telling me thank you. Great. Now let's head back and see what was created in Salesforce. I can see that a contact was created and a file was created. Let's check out this contact in Salesforce. Okay, I can see I got my name here. Let's see what other details we got. The birthday, the mobile phone. And let's take a look to see If we got the file attached, and here we go, we have the file attached with our file name ID for Barry Milstein, just like that. That's all great, and we've been able to create my contact, but what if this contact already exists in Salesforce, and I wanna update this contact instead of creating a brand new contact? So I'm gonna leave this contact open over here, and we'll try to update this contact gear icon, Salesforce, I'm going to my push integrations and I'm editing my contact push. And now I'm gonna change the action to update instead of create. When we update, we have the option, first of all, if no match is found, and we'll talk about how it finds the, uh, the contact to update in a second, but if no match is found, I don't wanna skip. I can decide I only wanna update if I wanna skip. In my case, I wanna create. And if there are multiple matches based on it, what do I want to do? I want to take the first record in my case, but you can also take the last record in your match. You can update all of the contacts that match, or if you matched with multiple contacts, you can choose to just skip and not update any of them. Let's write our condition or our query to decide which contact we want to update. So in my condition, we need to choose a field from Salesforce that matches with certain fields or fields from our form. So 
I will choose in my case, the email. I'm gonna decide that the email is how I wanna find my unique contact. And I'll say if the email in Salesforce equals the email field on my Titan form, then update the contact, otherwise create a new one. All right, and again, going back here, when we talk about matches or if multiple matches are found, that's talking about this condition. If multiple matches meet this condition. All right, of course your condition can be more complicated. You can add several different um, things to your condition. For example, I can say email and first name, or let's say last name have to match. Okay, so I can make this a more complex condition. I can add parentheses um, to make it, you know, if I have an or condition and I want to make it more complex, but in our case, I'm going to keep it simple and just say email equals email and I'll apply, I'll close, I'll save. And I don't need to update my button again. I've already updated the Salesforce action and it's already sitting in this button. So I'll now preview again and let's make sure we use the same email so that we update this record. And now when I fill it out, I'll write um, Perry, um, Milstein, and we'll paste in that email, and we'll change the phone number to like um, like that. And I'll say I'm over eighteen, and we'll change my birthday to this. And I'm not going to upload an ID this time, although I, I could do that as well. Let's just submit. Confirm, and I'll refresh this record here. And you can see I've updated the first name, I've updated the phone number, and I've updated this birthday. Now let's run it with a different email. I'll just change the character by one. We'll run it again with the same details, confirm. And you can of course see here that the email was not updated here. Of course, it does not include this S. But if we came back to our form, we should see that we created a new contact in Salesforce. Uh, it hit my duplicate rules, so it's not creating a new one, but let's just uh, change this so that we don't um, hit our duplicate rules in Salesforce in this case. And we'll go ahead and submit. And that's actually a nice thing to show that you can see in the logs um, when you get an error like that to see what happened on the Salesforce side. And this is an error coming from Salesforce telling me I matched with the same last name, so I, I have those duplicate rules in my Salesforce that prevented that from happening. In any case, now I've created a new contact in Salesforce called Terry Mill with a different email than this contact. And you can see because of the fact that our emails did not match, it created a new contact. And so that's how you create a form that can push data to Salesforce. Again, what we went over today was first of all, adding that file uploader, how you can maybe set some value rules and some restrictions on your file uploader. We talked about creating records in Salesforce, updating records in Salesforce, and pushing files to Salesforce and associating them with a parent record. Hope you enjoyed today's video and good luck out there.